Welcome to our video on installation reference methods. If you look at the wiring regulations book, you might be overwhelmed by the dozens of reference methods that are listed there. In this video, we are going to bust the myth that they are difficult to follow. 10 minutes from now, and you will have a new knowledge and a much improved understanding. First of all, why do they exist? Well, all cables will heat up by a certain amount when a current flows through them. A small current may have no noticeable effect, but as the current increases, the cable may reach a limit where the heat buildup begins to damage the cable. How we install the cable affects this limit, and the wiring regulations give us a set of tables that tell us what these limits are. As an example, a cable may be installed on the surface of a wall by cable clips. Heat can be lost into the wall, but a great amount of heat can be lost into the surrounding air. If the heat that can be lost from the cable is greater than the heat being generated by the current, then the cable will not overheat. This is a good scenario to aim for. If, however, the current demand on the cable is too great, then the cable can very quickly overheat. For most PVC domestic cables, this limit is 70 degrees centigrade. And above this temperature, the cable will begin to soften and degrade. Here we have PVC singles installed in plastic conduit. Plastic is a poor conductor of heat. That is why many cooking utensils are made of plastic or at least have plastic handles. The heat travels so slowly through the plastic that you do not burn your hands. The heat loss from the plastic conduit is reduced and the heat is still there. It is inside the conduit heating the cable up. The cables shown here in plastic conduit may very quickly exceed this 70 degree limit unless we take steps to limit the maximum current that flows through them. And not just conduit, inside walls, in brickwork, in the loft, just about any location will affect the cable's ability to lose heat. And this is the purpose of the tables. There are at least two factors to take into account. How we install a cable affects its ability to lose heat. Almost everything we do to a cable will slow down the heat loss. And the tables also give guidance on cable sizes, since smaller cables heat up more quickly. Used correctly, the tables will tell us that if we know the maximum current that will flow and we know how the cable will be installed, then here is the size of cable to use. If we know the size of cable to use, we know it will not overheat for those conditions. And we know that we are not paying extra money for a cable that is larger than it needs to be. Before we move on, you may want to press the save button at this stage. This will help you to quickly get back to this video for future reference and the easy memory methods that we are about to show you. Also, if you're going to follow along with the wiring regulations book, this information is found in Appendix 4. I am using the blue 18th edition book for this video and I am starting at page 386. This slide shows 2.5mm PVC singles installed in a ducting system with lots of space and free air, where it is easy to lose heat and they may not reach the limiting temperature of 70 degrees centigrade until 27 amps or more passes through them. But if they are installed in plastic conduit as shown here, we may need to reduce the current to 24 amps or less to prevent overheating. If we absolutely needed, must have the full 27 amps because the machine they are connected to draws close to 27 amps, then we have a problem. Fortunately, the tables will tell us to what size we must increase the cable 
to stay within our temperature limits. If we look at table 4A2 on pages 386 onwards, we see lots of different reference methods. It is very important that you use the correct reference method when selecting cable sizes and that you record the correct reference method letter or number on the test certificates. It is part of your job to get it right. At first, the sheer number of reference methods can be intimidating, but we are about to show you a method of looking at them that breaks them down into a very logical and easily memorised system. This is the method that we have taught at Learn Electrics for many years and we've always found that everyone quickly warms to this method and more easily remembers the correct categories. So, to begin. There are only six main categories to remember and these are A to F. Plus, there are four easy categories for twin and earth cable. That means that 119 of the 120 methods to be remembered have now been reduced to just 10. Reference method A is where the cables are generally enclosed in building materials such as insulating walls, window frames and architraves. And it is the architrave that is the key to remembering method A. Architrave begins with the letter A. A is for architrave and other building materials. It's easy. Cables installed in trunking and conduit are generally reference method B. Think about this. Trunking is a square box shape. Conduit is a round box shape. That means that B is for box, round box or square box. Hopefully this is making sense to you. In class at Learn Electrics, this is the moment when our students have a light bulb moment. Everything is dropping into place. What can we make of this slide? A cable can be clipped direct to a wall with a cable clip or similar. A cable can be chased into the wall and skimmed over with plaster. A cable can be on a non-perforated or complete cable tray. Hopefully you're in front of me now. What letter does clipped direct begin with? C. What letter does chased in begin with? C. And what letter does complete cable tray begin with? C. What is the reference method then? C. On to reference method D. D is for dug in. Armoured cable laid directly in the soil is dug in or buried. Cables laid in the ground in conduit or ducting systems are dug in. They are all method D. Moving on to perforated cable trays now. The perforated cable tray can be installed vertically on its end. Or it can be installed horizontally on its edge. On its end, on its edge. End and edge both begin with the letter E. Guess what the reference method is? E. Now, the perforated cable tray can also be laid on its back so that it is flat. And what does flat begin with? F. So, that has covered the reference methods E and F for perforated cable trays. Cable in concrete trenches is also reference method E or F. There is no quick memory jogger for concrete trenches, I'm afraid, just has to be remembered. Except that there are lots of E's in concrete trenches. This is the secret to memory joggers. The more bizarre and remote the connection, the easier it is to remember. And you will remember, just stick with it. Now, for twin and earth cables, really easy. There are just four reference methods. 100, 101, 102, 103. And there is an easy way of remembering these. Reference method 100 is for cables 
that are installed in a ceiling where the loft insulation does not exceed 100 millimeters. Here's the memory jogger. Maximum thickness of the insulation is 100, so the reference method is 100. Look at the slide and note that all of the three cables shown are all touching another surface that is not thermal loft insulation. It is either the plasterboard or a roof joist. If the insulation is over 100 millimetres in thickness, now we need a reference method with a number over 100. Well, 101 is over 100. And each cable is touching another surface. So our reference method for insulation over 100 millimetres is 101. Staying with twin earth cable that is still touching another surface, but this time with two pieces of plasterboard. So the cables are encased in the wall. This is going to need a number bigger than those already used. And there are two pieces of plasterboard. So shall we say 102? There we are then. Two pieces of plasterboard gives us reference method 102. Finally, that leaves a situation where the twin and earth cable is completely surrounded by thermal insulation. It does not touch any other surface. This is the worst case scenario. This is the most arduous conditions for the cable. It is more difficult for it to lose heat. How can this happen, you might ask? Well, it does. A cable is laid across a roof void on top of the existing loft insulation. A few weeks later, along come Roofs R Us or some other loft insulation company offering free government grants to upgrade your loft insulation. Do they care about your cable? Of course not. They just lay the new insulation over the top of your cables, get a signature from the householder and move on to the next job. Your previously OK cable is now in an insulation sandwich. Now we're going to need a bigger number than the last. How about 103? So cable completely surrounded by insulation is reference method 103. And there we have it. Our 10 simple reference methods. A for architrave or in building materials, walls and window frames. B for round box or square box in conduit or trunking. C is clipped direct to the wall or chased into the wall or for non-perforated complete cable trays. D was for dug in, buried in the ground. E was for the perforated cable tray, on end or on edge. And F was for flat perforated cable tray. Remember that concrete trenches are also E and F. When we looked at twin and earth cables, we used 100 for loft insulation up to 100 millimetres thick. 101 was for insulation over 100 millimetres. 102 saw two sides of plasterboard. And 103 was our worst case where the cable is completely surrounded by thermal insulation. Now we have the reference methods, what can we do with them? We can now choose our cable sizes for the conditions that our cable will be subjected to. That selection process is part of another video from Learn the Electrics, but for now, if we were to look at table 4D2A for multi-core cable, partly reproduced here on this slide, we can first of all select the reference method along the top row. Let us say this is method B. If we follow the appropriate column down the page and stop at the number that is equal to or greater than our maximum current, should we say 38 amps? So stop at 38. Now, by tracing our finger to the left hand column, we will find the minimum size cable for use for that application. In this case, it is six millimeters squared. This is just a quick example. And as we said, Another video from London Electrics 
we'll look into selecting cable sizes in a lot more detail. Thank you for watching this video. I'm sure you've learned something today and always remember to work safely. At Learning Electrics, we are frequently publishing videos full of tech tips on the electrical subjects for electricians and help for householders so they can live and work around electricity safely. You can catch us on YouTube and on Facebook. If you press the subscribe button right now, you will not miss our next video. Subscribing to our channel helps us and it helps you by adding more knowledge to your mental toolbox. Thanks once again and we hope to see you back here very soon.